So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is March the 24th, 2022. The topic for this evening is from duality to eternity. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the last few weeks, I've been um, exploring with all of you here about the evolution of consciousness, especially as it um, has affected or how it's being implemented on earth and how consciousness on earth has been evolving. Our evolution, the evolution of the consciousness on earth has been guided by um, our star family, should I say. So the the, the Nemnias came to about a million years ago, it came to Earth. And even before human beings, as we know uh, ourselves now, were even seeded, uh, the, the Nemnias came to live in the, um, the Arctic areas, the, uh, the icy areas, and transmit information or the knowledge of star systems into the the ice that's in the, the both the the north pole and the south pole so that earth itself the the earth itself has um has beginning uh, can actually begin the process of assimilating and integrating these information that are from from um, civilizations that's outside of earth itself and so later on the reptilians came and the reptilians taught human beings how to survive because the reptilians is a species of um, beings that is very good uh, in surviving no matter what kind of harsh environment they managed to find a way to survive and then after the the Nemnias and the reptilians came the vegans the vegans established a, a civilization on earth that's called the Mu and later on it became Lemuria the civilization so the, the vegans also, through living with human beings in and in helping us to establish civilizations, meaning living in groups and also starting to have um, political systems and all of those things that goes with being in a civilization, they, the, the vegans taught us their way of being uh, all that gave us their knowledge and all that and when the um, Anunnaki's came later on the Anunnaki's um, being a a branch of the reptilians as well they of course um, even though initially they're the reasons for them to come on earth is really to get resource is to for for a um like a kind of like a refuge a place of refuge because they actually come came to earth um when their own civilization and uh, is kind of in a pre precarious situation and also they were somehow um, they have to run away because part of, they are part of the Orion War, so they came to Earth, um, or I should say that they were guided by the the Confederation of Planets in a very um, energetic way to come to Earth because. The confederation of planets, even though they know that the, the the intent of the Anunnaki's may not be for our own good, but 
their interactions with the, the people on earth is going to strengthen our own resources of, and also our, our strengthen our own um, consciousness, our own civilizations in a very um, different way as well. That That is, they are also part of our evolution. And as it turns out, there is a branch, a faction within the Anunnakis that see, that actually saw Earth as being their new home. They are not just trying to take resources and um, away from Earth to, to bring back to their own planet in order to help themselves. They actually wanted to become part of earth and also to treat our um, to treat human beings as brothers and sisters to grow with us evolution um, of the the consciousness so that we are part of their family even though not all of the Anunnaki's, but at least a faction of the Anunnaki's decided to do that. And that's when the um, Arcturians and also Syrians helped them to create the Atlantean civilization. And that Atlantean civilization actually started in a very localized area at one point and it gradually moved towards the rest of the, the on earth and even though eventually the Atlantic, um, Atlantis sank the original civilizations the that island where the original Atlantean civilizations originated that part of it sank below the the water However, the, the legacy of the Atlantean, um, I would say empire, actually stay with humanity for a long time. And a lot of the things that humanity learned from that period of time stay with us. And so that is really what I've talked about um, last week is the fall of Atlantis. And also I talked a little bit about the, the different roles and the characteristics of each of the dimensions. So in order for consciousness to evolve, there is actually more than one way. The, the, um, the way that the confederation of um, planets wants to encourage us to go through is really to go within so that we can um, rise through the, the, the each of the go through each of the dimension and learn all of the wisdom of each dimension so that we can master a dimension all of the things that we can experience in that dimension and then progress to the next one so that we um, like, like, for example, for the first dimension is beingness is, is really about the idea of ourselves, the idea of consciousness. And then in the second dimension, that's when duality comes about. And duality actually is a way or a path for consciousness to start to grow because from the positive and the negative from duality the splitting of positive and negative positive and negative over and over again actually created so much energy that it brings us into the third dimension which is being able to experience all of these energies and in order to be able to experience the energies we have to have form so that is when um form like human beings or different animals like like um 
animals like lions or it could be uh, animals like um, fish, a whale, all of those different. And also with not just um, that, but also trees, plants, all of these different kinds of forms to hold the energy. That is how what we experience is through the interaction of animals, human beings. When we interact with each other, we experience our dimensions. We experience mm, being in proximity to each other, how we relate to each other. So all of that. And then when we go through the, the fourth dimension, what the fourth dimension brings is time. So that as eternal beings that we started out as, when we, um, the, the way is to give us a, the, the ability to die so that we can go through different experiences so that we can have many, many different experiences with many different um, human beings, with many different animals, all of those situations. And, and so through repeated experimentation, then we get to a point where we start to be able to look at all of our experiences. And, and as we look back through past, present, and even future, we can start to know and to start to integrate all of these experience as wisdom. And that's what brings us to fifth dimension, where we start to find our own purpose. And then from the fifth dimension to the sixth, which is transformation that we, once we have integrated all of those experience, we start to be able to, instead of just experiencing, we start to be able to actually plan for and be the architect of our own experiences. And then as we are able to go through many iteration of planning and experiencing, we start to get to the point where we can hold each of those realities and be able to know who we are as, a, as ourselves. And then when we become our own master, master within ourselves, we start to go on to the eighth dimension where we are able to connect with all of the other beings as well so that we can start to create a network of consciousness. And this network of consciousness allows us to go into the ninth dimension because the ninth dimension is when we realize who we truly are as a creator and we have mastered all the abilities to create realities within each of the previous dimensions. So this is really the, the, the normal, oh, I, I wouldn't say it's the normal, it's actually the, the preferred way of progressing through the, the consciousness and growing our consciousness is to learn and master each dimension and be able to then grow from there and, and move up and move up until we get to the point where we are fully realized as a creator being. And that's when we start to be able to go and create different realities from there. So that's, that's um, from the ninth dimension, we actually jump to the 10th dimension and, and beyond. That's one way of growing through consciousness. However, because in duality, we have to go through duality. So in duality, there is always 
other ways. There is never just one way because that is the nature of duality. So that means that some of uh, the beings who are within the confederation itself, the confederation of planets itself, um, just want to explain that the confederation of planets is really when species from different planets understand that that we this is that this reality this all of these dimensions is really for us to know ourselves is really how source wants to know itself to find out wh what it can do and who it can be so when different species starts to have that to to know that to realize that they started coming together banding together so that they can assist one another to grow the consciousness so it is it is like um people coming together as a group in order to achieve a common goal so that's what the confederation of planets are However, not everybody in the Confederation of Planets think the same way. Let's put it that way. The, some of the beings or some of the species within the Confederation realize that there has to be another way. And so they discover that there is another way. Because last week I talked about that there are trinities of dimensions. So the the in the third so the third dimension is six dimensions and the ninth dimension they are energetically linked. So that's why the beings in the sixth dimension work with the beings that are in the third dimension because the sixth dimension are beings are the architects. So in order to find out to know how the realities that they have designed uh, how is that how is that um what's the experience like to be to be living in the reality that they designed they have to work with beings in the third dimension to find out the experience part of it so that's why the third and the sixth dimensions are related and when you get to, when you um, go through this third dimension and a sixth dimension, and when you go through that enough, you will start to gather a lot of information and knowledge so that it actually links you up with the ninth dimension as well, where you become realized as a, a, a conscious creator. So that is one trinity of dimensions. There is also another, there are others as well. The other trinity of dimension is the second, the fourth and the eighth. So the second dimension is where duality is created. And then as duality is created, it pretty much automatically would create the um, fourth dimension as well, because the, the process of splitting positive and negative has so much energy in it that it creates the third and the third dimension needs the fourth dimension to, in, to be able to experience the, the the in the third dimension so that's why the second and the fourth are related and the fourth dimension is time and when you are time when you are in time there are different ways of being in time when you are just passing through time so it's like you're just passing through each of the dimension but you go through each of the dimension, but it does not mean that you can control the dimension. Whereas if you 
control a dimension, especially the fourth dimension. When you control the fourth dimension, when you actually become time itself, you can actually create a different timeline in order to get into the eighth dimension. And so that's how the second, the fourth, and the eighth dimension are energetically linked. And some of the beings within um, the, the confederation figured out that instead of going through from the first dimension all the way to the ninth, they can actually simply go to the fourth dimension. And instead of going through the fourth dimension is to actually become fourth dimension, to become time itself, to take over time itself, to be the master of time so that you can create your own timeline. You can create, you, because when you have, um, so it's, it's a difference between when you, borrow somebody's car or you're just um, renting a car to drive versus having your own car. So when you rent a car or you're just borrowing someone else's car, so yes, it gets you from one uh, location to the next, but you don't own the car. You don't have you don't actually have the, the power, as much power. Whereas if you get enough energy and you own a car, just like when you get enough energy, you own time, you become the master of time, you can create your own timeline and you can go from the fourth to the eighth dimension and be in control of your own creation. So there is part of the, the, some of the confederation species within the confederation decided that they don't want to go through time the way that the confederation wanted us to go through. They actually want to create their own reality through being the master of time. And because they want to do that, the, the best way of um, doing that within this galaxy is through the Orion portal. So let me actually just show you the Orion constellation. Let's see, yes, this is the Orion constellation. So Orion constellation. So within the Orion constellations, it's like there are many portals within this galaxy. So what are portals? Portals is really a, a gateway to go from one location or reality to another location or reality. So in this case, the portal within Orion is actually one of the biggest portal within this galaxy that allows a being to go through all of the dimensions. There are portals that allow you to go to some of the dimensions, but not all of them. However, the, the one in Orion constellation is the biggest one within this galaxy that allows any, any being who um, has, is able to go in and control this portal to be able to go through all of the dimensions. That's why they picked Orion's portal. And that's why this um, struggle between those who wants to go through the, um, the normal way, which is to go within ourselves 
and to learn to master each of the dimensions so that we can grow our consciousness within to go through all of the dimensions. Or the other way is to gather so much energy that they can go from and take control of uh, a portal in uh, and take control of time to go from the fourth dimension into the eighth dimension or other dimensions that whatever dimension that the being wants to go to and so it is the, the struggle between those who wants to um, gather so much energy and the way to gather so much energy is there there are a couple of ways to gather so much energy one of them is to control a planet or a star so a planet is is there's a lot of energy within each planet and with a star because a star has other planets around it. So when you control a star, you also control the planets around it as well. So when you take control of a planet and you destroy the planet, so it's kind of um, like the, the logic of the, the, or the, the mechanics of the atomic bomb is when you split an atom, there is so much energy being released. So imagine when you split apart a planet or a, a star, the energy that is being released is so humongous compared to just splitting an atom. So that is the, 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 um, the kind of um, energy, the, the level of energy that is needed in order to become time itself. So that, that's why some people within the Confederation wanted to take over a planet, take over stars in order to split the planet or the star. The, the, the unfortunate um, side effects is that any, any living being that is within the planet or the star, once the, the planet itself being split, it will kill all, all living being on them. So that's one way of gathering a lot of energy. There's another way of gathering energy. The other way is instead of splitting the star or the planet, is to actually control the beings that live on the planet because each one of us has a lot of energy we have so much energy within us these the energy within within us is what is powering us to grow our consciousness however if a being outside of us come here and control us and to keep our consciousness down, then the energy that we have, um, that we, we are not using for growing our consciousness, they can harness those energy by keeping our consciousness down. They actually take our energy, the energy that we can use for growing our own consciousness is being siphoned off and gathered and that's another way of getting a lot of energy by controlling a lot of people and a lot of planets and that's another way of um, gathering all the, that energy so that's what the orion war is about is about one side wanted to instead of going within, they actually want to control and become time and to get so much energy so that they can, instead of going through within, 
and evolving the way that confederation of planets wants us is they want to create a different reality that is controlled by them and only them because they manage to become time and create a completely different timeline and different realities. So that really is what the, the war is about because the Confederation of Planets, of course, wants to protect the, the, the beings within the planets so that they can, instead of becoming food for other beings to kind of jump the gate, to, to be siphoned off, to create their own reality, they want to assist the beings within these planets in order to grow our own consciousness from within and to go through to get to be the creator beings that we all have the potential to be. So the Orion, Orion's War has been going on for quite a while now. And at the outset of the Orion's War, part of the, the plan um, of the Confederation of Planet, part of it is to gather and, and to come together with different planets to have to create their own army so that they can actually fight, physically fight. However, there is also another way to win this war as well, is the Confederation started to seat different planets with um, beings that has the, the DNA of all of the, the planets, of all of the species that are participating in the Orion's war at the moment. So Earth is one of those planets where we, within our DNA, there are part of our DNA ancestors are the draconians, the reptilians, and all of the, and some of the, 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 the species that wanted to become time itself. They don't want to go within. They actually want to gather enough energy from the outside in order to control time to become time and create their own rea realities and timeline. And then some of the DNA um, ancestors are from the beings that wanted to go through all of the, the dimensions by looking within. And I'm saying this, not that um, every draconian is bad or every Pleiadian is good because there are some within the Pleiadians that actually um, does not want to go within. They actually wanted to become time itself and to go through time go through the fourth dimension to the eighth. And there are also some draconians that wanted to go within. They don't want to create their own reality. They actually want to harness that power within themselves. They actually want to master themselves rather than master other people. So, it's not really about some species are good and some species are bad. It is that it's really a, um, a war between two opposing philosophy. The philosophy of going with whatever it is that the confederation or the, the the most um, 
progressive way to go within and go through all and to grow our consciousness from the first dimension all the way to the ninth dimension. And also the alternative way, which is, is to control, is to grow our consciousness using outside forces by harnessing other people's energy to gather enough energy to go from the fourth to the eighth dimension. So it's really about the war of this Orion's war. It's really the war of philosophy. And that's why mm, some people within the Confederation decided to place all of these different species from different um, from the two opposing philosophies within our DNA so that the people on earth should they should they decide to do it is to go within and when we go within and find the peace within ourselves if we can become congruent within ourselves to find that peace and also to understand that we don't need to get in get energy from outside within ourselves we have everything all of the energy that we ever needed to grow our consciousness our own consciousness from the first dimension all the way to the ninth dimension where we become the God consciousness itself, that we actually have it all within ourselves. When we get to the point where we can find that peace and also find that energy, that inexhaustible limitless energy that is inherent in each and every one of us because each and every one of us we have that connection to source and that connection to source provides us with infinite energy so we actually don't need to eat we don't need to get energy from someone else simply by going within and looking within and aligning ourselves, finding that peace and harmony within ourselves, we can actually go beyond duality, beyond this good and evil, and actually become the God consciousness that is already within ourselves. So that is what I mean by from duality to eternity because even though right now we are still living in duality we still most of us anyways needs to eat and eat we need to we need to eat either animals or even if we are vegan even if we are completely eating just plants but plants is still some species that's outside of us. Actually, we don't need that. By going within, by, by really aligning with our own source energy, by harnessing that energy that is within ourselves, we can grow beyond this duality and beyond all of this power struggle that we experience each day within ourselves and outside ourselves, that we can actually drop all of that. And when we find this peace within ourselves, then the Orion War or any kind of war will start to drop off because as within, so without. When we have that peace within ourselves, then peace would be everywhere 
outside ourselves in each of the dimension, we would have peace as well. So that's all I want to talk about this evening.